on today's show. After a win in Toronto, the Bulls rule the East. We discuss if Derrick Rose should be criticized for his recent comments on playing hurt. And will Courtney Lee's late game heroics take the number one spot in this week's top 10? It's Friday, November 14th. The starter starts <coughs> now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to the starters, whether you're watching live online or catching us on NBA TV, very happy you've joined us. I'm J.E. Skeets, and alongside me, as always, it's Tass Mellis. Was good for the Bulls, wasn't good for the Raptors last night. To my right, starters blog editor, Trey Kirby. Hey -oh. hey -oh. hey -oh. And finally, our own international man of mystery, it's Lee Ellis. Girls. Mm -hmm. Lele. Lele, -le. mm -hmm. yes. Let's get right into it, because we have tons we want to get to on tonight's show. The Bulls and the Raps. Very strange still to me seeing a Raptors game in Toronto on TNT. A quick look at the standings after last night's games. Heading into this one, the Bulls were 6-2, and two, the Raps were 7-1. and one. They had the best record in the East. We're all tied up now. Both teams 7-2. and two. It was an entertaining game, uh, like most basketball games, ups and downs for both squads, but it was that third quarter where the Bulls just dominated the Raps. Yeah, I think the Bulls showed who the best team in the Eastern Conference is. The Toronto Raptors just weren't up to the challenge, it, it sure seemed like. The Bulls were just phenomenal. Both sides of the ball, you mentioned it, Skeets, great first half. I was a little disappointed with how the Raptors played that third quarter. Obviously, the Bulls' offense has improved, but I just didn't like how Kyle Lowry, their leader, was a little frustrated and didn't really take on that leadership role. They yeah, just kind of took him out of the game. He was getting so frustrated. Yeah, yeah, they just weren't ready for their biggest game, you know, since the playoffs against the Brooklyn Nets, and they weren't ready to take the throne of the Eastern sure. Conference leadership or, or that title that some people are preemptively giving them for some reason, prematurely giving them at the, you know, this very early in the season to say that the Toronto Raptors are the best team in the Eastern Conference. I mean, it's way too early, and they showed yesterday Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRozan weren't ready to lead this team. It was a little disappointing watching him do that because his team is looking at him, I'm speaking specifically about Kyle Lowry, looking at him to, to take that leadership role, and he wasn't ready to do that. I, look, I'm Lowry's number one fan, obviously of course, Raptors that, that's fan, why, but I don't he, think, I'm not putting this by any means on Lowry, what he did or his lack, and DeMar shot the ball poorly. I'm giving all the credit in the world to the, to the Bulls. Mm -hmm. You're right. I was wrong in the crossfire segment earlier this week. They're much better right now, as it is. Their bigs dominated them absolutely crushed them. Yeah. Al Gasol was the main guy, just abusing any guy yeah. that the yeah. Raps put on them. They did throw different looks at him as well. And that's what is, I mean, it's tough not to think, and I know the Cavs will get into the conversation, but right now the Bulls have an offense. Yeah. yeah. That's the crazy part. This team doesn't have to get a stop every single play to win games now. Yeah. They can also do it offensively. You see right now, I mean, one of the better offenses in the league. And the play they got in Pau Gasol, He's so versatile that he can score. He doesn't have to score. They can use him to pass the ball or they can use him in the low post like they did last night. He's got that mid-range jump shot. He's just added so much to their offense. It's incredible. And it came in handy last night after Rose went out to have somebody else that they could just go to to get offense because last year it was all get the ball to the high post, run yeah. around a bunch and hope somebody gets open. And you see just the change from last year to this year. The points in the paint have increased by about six per game. They're taking far less mid-range attempts, six attempts less than this season and they're taking way more three-point attempts so they're in the paint more they're shooting three more threes more that mid-range game has sort of evaporated it, it it has become a better offense and they've only played with that starting lineup for two games that's right and you did you and were saying made that. it clear that this is the best team in the eastern conference thus far I, i'm still happy that the raps made a game of it mm -hmm. i thought lowry sort of was a bit of he spearheaded that comeback a little bit yeah, he did. made it interesting that's why he's their best player that's why it's all on his shoulders it feels like but they haven't won their games this season just because of Lowry no, no. outside of the Celtics game. No, it's DeMar a deep team. They yeah. got a great contribution from James Johnson in the mm -hmm. first half, and mm -hmm. a lot of other guys I don't think stepped up. DeRozan was forcing things left and right, yeah. but again, yeah. a credit to the Bulls and Jimmy They're Butler's Jimmy defense. Butler. Yeah, he makes it tough for guys. Jimmy Butler, I mean, I know the Bulls can match any offer they get, but you saw last night oh. as an example why the Bulls are going to have to pay him big bucks because he was just so good defensively on DeMar DeRozan. I mean, DeMar DeRozan, I was a little disappointed. He only had four free throw attempts last night. I right. like it when he's not getting that. Yeah, when he, I mean, that's his game. He shoots a lot of jumpers. 
But when it's not falling, you like to see him mix it up and get to the line if he can. But again, just back on Jimmy Butler, because he gives them something offensively as well. But defensively, he's just such a, a bulldog down there. Yeah, the defense has actually taken a step back for the Bulls a little bit this year. They're not rebounding well, but last night, you can see what they can do. Like in the second half, they just turned it up and made it so the Raptors were trying to play iso ball. And you just can't do that against the Bulls. Yeah. They work too well as a unit together. And they're going to get better, too, because Joachim Noah is still not right. I, His I, knee yeah. doesn't look totally good. You're, you're right, but I love seeing a rejuvenated Al Gasol. Yeah. I love it. I mm -hmm. Like, it's been a while uh, yeah. that, that we've seen this guy can just take over games. And you're right, Lee. I mean, yeah, he can score, but... Are you gonna he's, send? Are you gonna send help? Yeah. Because they'll pick you apart that way. And he's not the kind of guy who's gonna pout if he doesn't get a few no. shots either. He's just such a good team play like that because he knows he's gonna get his looks at some point. This is why he picked the Chicago yeah. Bulls. He had other options in Oklahoma City and, and other places, but he knew he was gonna play a big role on this offense in this offense because they desperately needed him to play a role in this offense. And you're right, Skeets. I mean, LA kind of sucked the life out of oh, him. Oh yeah. And uh, understandably so. There was rumors that he was going to be traded multiple times over the years, and this team is just so incredibly deep with Pau Gasol at the four spot. Well, Bulls fans held their collective breath again last night when Derrick Rose exited the game late in this one. It looked like at first it was the ankle again. Apparently it wasn't. Uh, you know, of course, talking to the media and the coaches after saying that he's fine. It was a tweak of the hamstring. It's It should be minor, to use their words. But Derrick Rose has been in the news all week mm -hmm. because of something he said on Tuesday about his long-term health and the way he's been sitting out games. And let's give it to you here. Derrick Rose said, I know a lot of people get mad when they see me sit out or whatever, but I think a lot of people don't understand that when I sit out, it's not because of this year. I'm thinking about long-term. I'm thinking about after I'm done with basketball, having graduations to go to, having meetings to go to. I don't want to be in my meetings all sore or be at my son's graduation all sore just because of something I did in the past. Twitter exploded. And media pundits, even Charles Barkley last, there, last night with Shaq on Inside the NBA for that game, calling the remarks stupid is what mm -hmm. Chuck said. Uh, you're not going to believe this. Chuck was speaking his mind. <laughs> um, but a, a little shocking to me, but I'm interested to hear what everyone watching and listening think and you guys here at the table. Do you, do you uh, question Derrick Rowe's commitment to winning no. to his team with these remarks? No, I, I think he has to be a little hesitant every time he takes the basketball floor. The guy has had two major surgeries over the last two and a half years. And yes, when he says, I don't want to walk into meetings injured or limping, every fan sits back and, and thinks, I mean, I don't care about your meetings. Right. I don't care if you're dragging your butt into your quote unquote meetings, whatever meetings you have. <laughs> I just want to see you play basketball. So that's all they care about. But at the same time, don't you want Derrick Rose to be a little hesitant, even if you are a Bulls oh, yeah. fan? You want him to think about that, right? I mean, you saw when he went down late in the fourth quarter, mm -hmm. He has to be worried about his, I don't want to call it fragility, but he's in and out there of the lot lineups. Of problems. Yeah. This, this team or this conference is so wide open. You need Derrick Rose. This year, you have the opportunity to win the conference. You need a Derrick Rose out there. So he has to think about his physical being. This isn't a healthy player. Right. So no one doubts what you're saying there. But maybe it was the way he said it. Is yeah. that it? Yeah. 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 People were like, oh, yeah, your meetings in 16 years from now, and your graduation. Because he gives it all when he plays. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing that's crazy to me about questioning his commitment is to even come back from two straight knee injuries and oh. then more injuries the very first time you're setting foot on the court the two seasons after you already blew out your knee twice that's crazy just because you have to work so hard to even get back to be yeah. able to play yeah. in the nba and he's a guy that when he's playing he plays super hard and the style he plays requires a lot from his body you're right he needs to take care of his body he just said it wrong because derrick rose tends to say things a little bit wrong when he's being honest people yeah. don't like athletes quote unquote whining that's yeah. right about their health because yeah. people think you get paid hundreds of millions of dollars to play a game yeah that we play all for fun down at you know down at schools when you're in yeah. school at the playground people don't like that sort of again it, it comes off whiny yeah, a they bit. think that money solves any problem you have and while money's nice but sometimes for these guys it, there's more to life than just money look yeah. let's hear what but people think but it's even his basketball life that he's yeah. caring yeah. about no, it I know. just didn't come out that way let's hear what people he's think got up meetings. on twitter hashtag the starter yeah we all have meetings yeah. we gotta get to a meeting <laughs> we gotta take a break here uh coming up next tass awards his worst of the week honors is it the sixers it's not Derrick Rose. It's got to be the Sixers, no? We'll nope. find out when we return. It is not.
Welcome back to the Starters. Now this is the point of the week where we hand out the dishonor to someone in the NBA family that has done wrong in the eyes of the Starters. It's time for the Worst of the Week. Ladies and gentlemen, the Worst of the Week. This week's Worst of the Week is the New York Knicks' J.R. Smith. Sorry to do this to you, J.R. It's happened again. Wednesday night, the Knicks weren't feeling good. They had lost five in a row, but there was some optimism. The 2-6 and six Magic, who had played the night before, were visiting MSG. Now, after a rough first half, the Knicks fought back, but were still down late in the fourth. The only man who was shooting well is this man, Mello. With four seconds left, he hit a miraculous three to pull the Knicks to within one. After Evan Fournier missed one of two, it was mellow time. Knicks down two, three seconds left. Ball inbounded to J.R. Smith, 35 feet away from the bucket as Mello frantically called for the ball from inside the three-point line directly in J.R.'s line of sight. J.R. chose J.R. instead. He threw up a 27-foot jumper and Mello, well, he just threw up his hands. J.R. backpedaled as if it had a chance, but the ball went thunk. <laughs> off the glass, way left of the hoop. Mello clearly frustrated walking off the floor. He finished the night 10 of 17 when ESPN's Ian Begley asked JR about his choice. JR said, I think we went with the best shot. I think it was the right shot, and I just didn't make it. If I force that into Mello, what kind of shot is he really going to have? Well, I would guess one that probably would have hit the rim at least. JR Smith, your worst of the week. And as we know, JR Smith is also the reigning worst of the oh, year man. title holder for 2013 2014. Can he repeat? Ooh. I don't really want to bag on a guy for one shot. You just did. I did, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, it is only one attempt. At this point of the game, though, there's only one man who is shooting the basketball very well. You've lost that many games in a row. And I think it's just a question with the shooting guard position for the yeah. New York Knicks. Who's going to get the minutes there? If you want a shooting guard, this team has got plenty of them. They're starting two in Iman Shumpert uh, and Tim Hardaway, but J.R. Smith is available. Tim Hardaway is available. Iman Shumpert, I think, is a little less available, but they've got plenty of options. Phil Jackson has been very open about saying, hey, our guys are available, and I'm willing to move this team around. This team is going to look different in the coming months. All mm -hmm. right, J.R. Smith gets another worst yeah. of the week. I'm sorry, J.R. I'm a little surprised, I have to say, that you didn't go with the 76ers mm. because of last night. They lose by 53 points. <laughs> yeah. That's not a typo, guys. They lost by 53 points. <laughs> to the Mavericks. They've had a bad, obviously, start to the season. They're 0-8. They also haven't won a game. You could lump that in. But they were down 38-10 to 10 in the first quarter. You know, they shot under 30%, turned it over 27 times. Charlie Villanueva was on the floor. I mean, it's, it was laughable. It was laughable. Again, they, they haven't won a game. It, it got, it was so out of control in this particular game that people were reading newspapers mm -hmm. in wow. the second quarter. In the middle of the game. Got to catch up on your news. Yeah. How's that Dilbert comic? <laughs> um, I mean, it's crazy. It, it really is. And so I'm a little surprised, but you got to start wondering, is this the worst team we've ever seen in history? It's... Because through eight games, start of season, the scoring margin, they're nearly right there with the, the two worst ever in the 97-98 Warriors and the 88-89 Heat. You know, they're right there. Were so those, it's, it's were those teams playing for a draft pick? Oh, man. And then, you know, That's Lee, you brought this yeah. up uh, <laughs> last week, I yes. guess it was, talking about the worst starts to a season ever. Sixers 0-8. You got uh, a while to go before you catch those nets of 0-9-10. You can do it! Because like, they got the San Antonio Spurs and the Rockets up next. So they were 0-10. Right. Um, you know, it, it is crazy. One bright spot, I guess you can call that for the Sixers, Michael Carter-Williams, uh, rating Rookie of the Year. He did make his debut for the Sixers last night. Obviously, had didn't really matter at all. Uh, it took a lot of shots to get to his 19 points. But it was good to see him out there. I'm glad he's out there. But on Thursday, he actually he uh, had an article, or he wrote an article for the Players' Tribune as a contributing editor, and he wanted everyone to know that, look, him and his team are trying their best here. Quote, on tanking, on whether the 76ers are tanking, you can question my shooting, you can question my ceiling, just don't question if I'm giving my all every single night. Don't talk to me about tanking. Went on to say, Grown men are going to go out and purposely mail it in for a one in four shot at drafting somebody who might someday take their job? Nope. Great, nope. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a great article. I, I recommend you check it out. But I have a problem with it. And it's that no one is saying that the players, that the 76ers, Michael Carter Williams, whoever's out there for them, <clears throat> that they're not trying. They're going out Absolutely. there and trying yeah. to win a basketball game. Have you ever met an NBA player? Have you ever played cards with an NBA player, yeah. throw darts? They're the most competitive people oh, yeah. 
in the world. And that's the only reason they're in the NBA. And, and their coaches so, too. They're trying to go 82 and out. Exactly. But what the problem is, is their organization is trying to tank. And this, How can you argue it? This might backfire on the organization because if these players continue to get humiliated on the floor, they're not going to want to stay around. In, in this team. They're going to want to go elsewhere because no one wants to be part of a team that was like, hey, you guys were the worst team in NBA history. I think this team does have some camaraderie. I, I know at this point that, that they're down in the dumps, but they do have some players that do like each other that were hanging out together during the summer. Nerlens Zoel, Joel Embiid, Michael Carter-Williams, and Dario Saric, their pick who is playing in Turkey currently, but they were hanging out at the FIBA World Cup tournament, cheering each other on, cheering on Dario Saric as he lost his teeth and came back and played in that tournament. The Philadelphia Blue Collar crowd is gonna love Dario Saric whenever he comes over. A but couple of years from they now. Have Seven undrafted from now. players. It's got to happen at some point. You're right, though. In the, in the league. They draft guys that are injured or going to stay over. One more year. Yeah. Give them one more one year. One more year. It's two years in a row here. This. <laughs> Madness. Yeah, unbelievable loss. Got to take a break. Coming up, where will Courtney Lee's LU game winner fall in the starters' top ten plays of the week? We'll count them down next. Welcome back to the starters, Skeets Test, Lee and Trey. It's Friday, which means it's time for the starters' top 10 plays of the week. Let's get to number 10. Brandon Jennings versus the Wizards doing the rondo. Oh, well nice. done. Oh, yeah, you can even well hear the Wizards crowd going crazy. Woo, Fulton Garrett Temple there. Yeet. He's done that a couple of times already. Yeah, yeah. and Ron will love it. At number nine, Carmelo Anthony not shooting passive. A beauty look to Ooh, Yvonne yeah. Shumpert. That's the triangle offense test. Yeah. That's where it came. Yeah, that is a cut that they use in the triangle <laughs> offense. It's true. A number eight, two Kyrie Irving plays. This is very Smitty under the rim right there. Dribbling through traffic against the Nuggets. Whoop. Who needs a left hand? And one more. Oh, Over yeah. there, Gordon. See you later. Against the Pellies. Was oh. it a travel? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> At number seven, DeMar DeRozan with this fantastic 360 layup. I'll show it to you from this angle. Going right into the body and finishing the job there. Just hanging in the air, just chilling. Oh yeah, I'll throw it in as well. Beautiful. Very, very nice. At number six, the manimal is going to devour Wesley Matthews. Oh yeah. Attempt there. <laughs> I love that one. Lee, you like this one, I eh? I do, I do. You That's like a good block. <laughs> I love it. At number five, Lance Stevenson. Double OT, 2.7 seconds on the clock, a long bump. It goes down. Make him dance, Lance. It went <laughs> off the glass. And then Steve Clifford, head coach of the Bobcats, threw up his hands. Yes, no, oh yeah. And he got on the scores table. I do not approve. You didn't bank. <laughs> You shouldn't be on the score table. At Sorry, Lance. Four, Tash, help me out. Nick's guard. Emma Chupan. Very nice. With Nick's the... two top ten yeah. plays. Baseline reverse. Yeah, yeah you think they're seven and two. They're great. At number three, KJ McDaniels. We got a Sixers play. Watch oh. out. Oh. Watch That's out in the second oh. row. Seriously. Wrong, wrong sport. Oh. That's a volleyball play. At least be entertaining, right? Yeah, exactly. Wow. He has been very entertaining. He could have just caught it, you know? Yeah. Uh, no, I know. Wouldn't get on. At number two. Back to the wraps. James Johnson oh. gonna kill another sixer here. That's Brandon Davies, I believe. And uh, you know who liked it? Drake in his sheep sweater. Right. <laughs> Don't cheer too hot. Hard. You're gonna get hot in there. Number one, Courtney Lee, game winner for the Memphis Grizzlies on Thursday night. 0.3 seconds left on the clock. You gotta tip it in. Why is there no defense what? there? Courtney Lee with the tip in from Vince Carter. What a play. Did the clock start late? Controversial. Who knows? Controversial. Controversial. I don't play. understand why you aren't under oh. the rim to guard the rim. That's very oh. confusing, but a beautiful finish by Courtney Lee and Vince Carter. I mean, they deserve to lose, right? Blew a 26 yeah. point lead there. Twice Tough in. loss. Agree, disagree with our top 10. Let us know on Twitter, hashtag the starters. One more look, though, at that controversial play here. Yeah, controversial three for, seconds. for a couple reasons. Yeah, one did did Ryan Hollins tip it, and if he did, yeah. then game's over. He thinks he tipped it. I, I mean, the too. way the ball yeah. suddenly just dies and how does Vince be throwing it? Yeah, it's a, bad, it's it's a terrible it. pass. It was reminiscent 2009 game two. Courtney Lee had the opportunity to tie the series with the Orlando Magic right at the buzzer of the fourth quarter, and he. Missed it. Oh, Should have went reverse. Went to overtime. <laughs> Lakers won. What a different series it could have been. I mean, they looked at it, by the way, the one there last night. They yeah. looked at it for 10 minutes at least, trying to determine whether someone tipped it, the clock, Ryan and all that. Hollins Hollins didn't did. react, though. Like, he sort of just looked around. You would think he would have been a bit more friendly. He had a good laugh around. with Vince afterwards, yeah. <laughs> saying that he yeah. did. Tough. It was, yeah. Tough he loss. played a great point three seconds. Those, those were his only seconds. Look good out that there. That was it. Yeah, that was it. Glad to have him back. Let's yeah. <laughs> unleash the unicorn. Time for the Starters Fantasy Minute. 
uh, as we head into the weekend here, some weekend warriors. For yeah, you. we call this the weekend warriors because we want you to pick up a guy that's playing Saturday and Sunday. You know that there's one spot on your roster you can drop who's not that great. Well, this is the weekend Golden State. Warriors edition because all four of these guys playing for the Warriors because they are the only team that is playing both Saturday and Sunday. We've got Harrison Barnes, Sean Livingston, Andrew Barbosa, and Reese Bates all available. They're all quite available in your Yahoo League. Now, Maurice Spates doesn't have great numbers this season, so don't be very pumped what he's going to produce for you this weekend. He plays the Charlotte Bobcats on Saturday. Eh, he's not going to have Hornets, a great night. Mean? Oh, yeah, the Hornets. On, Bobcats Cassie. are the Hornets, whoever they are. But what you want to pick him up for is Sunday because he had a great game on Thursday. Sunday he plays the Lakers. All right. They allow a lot of buckets in the paint. Marie Space will get you those buckets. Uh, reminder, it's rivalry week here on the starters. Uh, <laughs> actually, Tass and I are playing each other in a tight one. We got Lee and Trey going head to head into the final weekend. We show you this because you might remember earlier this week, you guys bet that the loser <laughs> would have to dress as the Fantasy Minute unicorn. <laughs> Great. Oh, you found a horn, Lee, because yes. you're down 7 2. Oh, Not, looking like good. Good. Not looking good for Lee. Uh, Lee. Really? Good good point, though. I've never <laughs> seen an Australian unicorn. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't wait. All right. Final break, but when we return, we go north of the border for Lee's very solid play. Is it the Bulls? Is it the Raps? Can't wait to find out. Come on back. You're watching the starters. Yeah. yeah. Back with the starters, last night's pick and payoff results. Tass gained a game because he went against the Raps. Back the Bulls. Right. Correct. 4-0 for Tass there. I went 3-1. So I'm up one game still tonight. Again, we send in our picks separately. We agree on all five games. We like the Magic, the Heat, the Knicks. What's wrong with us? The Thunder and the Suns. Mm. So there you go. Good luck to you, my friend. Lee. Time for the very solid play tonight. Yes, I love this play from the Bulls last night uh, against the Raptors. It starts with Captain Kirk with a bouncy to Jono underneath the Gibbo for the dunk. Just really, really nice execution, <laughs> slicing open the uh, Raptors there. Bouncy, bullet, bang. <laughs> That's what bouncy I call bullet a very solid play. The triple B. Excellent. Gibbo. Gibbo. Excellent. Lee and I. Uh, Jono. Uh, we played NBA Rebus yesterday yes. on the show. If you haven't checked it out, uh, you know, check it out on Twitter or on our Facebook. But we had some people send some in. Yeah, uh, this one came in from Poland as well, from fan Matt Martell. He sent in three of his own Rebus. So if you guys can quickly get through these, who do you think that is? Uh, Steve, Steve Blake. Blake. Steve Blake, yes. <laughs> the next one is a little bit more uh, in-depth. That's Jalen. Uh, Jalen. Jalen Rose. Rose. And the last one, you should get it's very, very easy. Very clever as well. That's oh, a, that's a Trey Kirby. That's right. Wow, oh, good man. Stuff. Excellent Rebus. job, Matt Martha. Yes, Keep so sending in the Rebus, guys. Uh, a great week, a blast, guys. We recorded our hour-long podcast this morning. It's called The Drop. Check it out on iTunes or on the blog. And we'll be back on Monday to recap the NBA weekend. Yes, looking forward to that. Thank you so much for joining us today. And remember, surprises get old. <laughs> Embrace the night, people. You don't like surprises. Bring, it, bring in the cake. <laughs>